So to start, I grew up in southwest Saskatchewan and moved onto my aunt's farm in 2019 to live in the other house that's on their property. The house is fairly old, but I loved it. It wasn't long after I moved in, though, that I started to feel uneasy in the house alone. I would close every window when it got dark, as it felt like something was watching me through them every night. Eventually, I decided to get a puppy to keep myself company when my boyfriend at the time was at work or away from the house. It helped to have the company, but I always dreaded having to take her outside when it was dark. For a bit of scene setting, our house sat on the left side of the gravel road. At the back of the house, there was about 10 meters of backyard, and then there was the cow pasture and the cow barn. We didn't own cows, but in the summer, another farmer would rent out our pasture space, and so we would have them on our property. It wasn't uncommon at night to hear coyotes around the farm either, and there were tons. Every so often, when I'd go out with my puppy, we'd hear them all around us, too close for comfort. We had a farm dog too, who would keep the coyotes away for the most part, as she was huge, but every so often, She'd wander elsewhere on the property to scout, and the coyotes would get a little too close for comfort. They always tried to lure my puppy out to them, but luckily I kept her leashed. Now, one thing you should know about my pup is that it takes her forever to find a spot to go to the bathroom. This is still a huge problem today, four years later, but back then it was the bane of my existence. She would pace for at least five minutes, and that was only after finding a suitable spot. Sometimes we would be out there for damn near a half hour, just so she would go. On this particular night, it was raining pretty heavily. I was not happy to be out there, and she decided that she wasn't going to go until she found her perfect spot. We had already been out there for 15 minutes, and at this point, she was also getting frustrated with the rain and wanted to go inside but I wanted her to go before we went in, since we'd already been out there for so long. So, as any annoyed puppy mother would do, I started getting a little frustrated and would repeat, go potty, every time she'd get distracted from her objective. It was dark, I was cold and annoyed, and to make matters worse, the cows behind us were fussing fairly loudly. This was out of the ordinary for them, they were usually quiet and sleeping at this time of night. I was also hearing what sounded like a strange bird whistling, but I shook it off as probably being an owl. I tried to keep it off of my mind as I kept shouting and pleading go through the rain to my small, fuzzy, white asshole. I was facing away from the pasture, and suddenly in my left ear I heard it. Go. Now... One thing you should know about me is, I have a very strong flight response, typically, but this froze me on the spot, as I was mostly confused at what the fuck I just heard. I tried telling myself I didn't hear it. I tried telling myself that it was just a move from a cow that I'd heard wrong. But again, as if spoken directly behind me, I heard it another time. Go. It sounded unnatural as if it came from someone who'd never spoken a word before. A raspy, deep, monotone go. It almost sounded like it was coming out of an old radio, but of course there were no radios out there. Every time it said it, it sounded the exact same as the first time it was said, and whatever it was, it started repeating it as if it had been taught its new favorite word. At this point, I spun around to the pasture to find nothing there. Then, again from behind me, go. This had all happened in the span of about three seconds, and at this point, I remember shouting out loud, All right, don't have to tell me twice, as I picked up my little furball and made a mad dash for my front door. I swiftly locked both doors behind me and sat bewildered in my kitchen. My puppy went back to puppying immediately, obviously unbothered by it all, and happy mom wasn't making her stay out in the rain any longer. I picked up my phone and called my aunt, asking if my uncle had been out in the field with the cows. She said no, and I explained to her what 
had just happened to me. She sent my uncle over to the pasture to check it out, but soon after he told me he hadn't seen or heard anything. He said he checked the pasture again in the morning. I spent my night hiding from the windows with the lights and TV on loud enough to not hear anything outside. The next morning, when my uncle checked on the pasture, he found two calves dead. That explains the colossal cow panic that had ensued the night before. I regret this, but I didn't push for more information, as I honestly just didn't want to know. But they told me other than that, they didn't find anything out of the ordinary. A few months later, I moved off of the farm. I couldn't be in that house alone anymore, and my boyfriend and I had parted ways. A few months after that, I started going to therapy for the paranoia this had caused me. I started feeling like people were watching me, out to get me. Another few months after that, I moved out of the province for good and finally felt safe. I'm wondering if any of you here have any idea what the hell this would have been. There's no chance there would have been someone in our field, as we were fairly far away from town and neighbors. And we have cameras that would have seen anyone enter our property. Coyotes are common, but I don't think they're capable of mimicking words. Are there any ideas? As I was walking home from work last night, about halfway to my house, a disheveled man, who looked to be either homeless or extremely down on his luck, crossed paths with me from the other side of the sidewalk. He had initially been walking in the opposite direction, but as soon as he saw me, he immediately turned around and started following me. He began rambling incoherently and aggressively, and his words were so slurred that I hardly understood a thing he said. All I could make out was something about a care package and look at you. It was obvious this man was under the influence of multiple substances. I quickened my pace and tried to avoid eye contact with the man, and he was getting agitated that I wasn't paying attention to him. When my walking speed got too quick for his inebriated stumbling to keep up with, he stopped talking and instead began just trying to follow me. I kept looking over my shoulder at him, and every time I saw him, he would either stop or try to duck behind a bush. Finally, I started outright sprinting and looking for a spot that I could hide in myself. I came up to my local mosque and tried to sneak around the corner into the parking lot of it, where there was a little tree that I could hide behind. While hiding there, I frantically dialed 911. I told them that a strange man displaying unstable behavior was trying to follow me and described my location, myself, and the man to them. The dispatcher assured me that officers were on their way to where I was, but while waiting for them, I saw a figure heading up the sidewalk in front of the parking lot I was hiding in. Panic immediately filled me until the passerby was close enough to where I could see that it was not the same man who had just bothered me, and they turned out to be harmless. Mere moments after this, the cops arrived to where I was. They pulled up next to the tree and motioned for me to come out and talk to them. The officer driving the vehicle asked me the standard questions, a description of the incident, where I was when it happened, the usual. While we were talking, he spotted a man in another parking lot down the street, not far from where I had first encountered the creep. He asked me if this was the man I'd encountered, and it was hard to tell between the darkness and the distance, but I was pretty sure it was. Another police vehicle had pulled into that parking lot, and it appeared that an officer got out to talk to the man. The officer I had been talking to asked me how far I was from my house, and I told him I was pretty close to my street at this point. He assured me that I should be safe to walk the rest of the way home, and that they had other cops patrolling the area. I thanked him and finished walking home, without further incident, thank God. Shortly after I got home, I saw that I had a text from my boyfriend that read, Are you okay? 
The text had been sent at around the time the incident was occurring, as if he could sense I was in a fearful situation. I replied back, telling him what had happened. He told me that he'd gotten yelled at by a homeless man earlier too. I described the creep I'd encountered to him and asked if he thought it was the same guy. He said he didn't think so. We also had a brief phone call to make sure each other was okay. I let him know that I was home safe and he told me he was in a vehicle with a group so he was safe too. I don't know what the cops ended up doing about the man but I hope he stays as far away from me as possible. I live in a city located in a valley with a lot of smaller towns up the hills and mountains around, so it's part of the local culture for teenagers and young adults to visit these smaller areas during the winter to drink, smoke weed, and hang out with their friends. My uncle bought a house in one of these areas, so eventually I decided to get the keys and spend a weekend there with five of my friends. The house has two big bedrooms with three beds each and a lot of extra mattresses. At night, we decided at some point to go back inside and just chill watching TV, but since the living room had no sofas yet, we brought some mattresses from the bedrooms and just used them. One of my friends, Victor, decided to go out to smoke, and after some minutes we hear some knocking at the window just behind us. Everyone got scared for a second, but just looked at the window and said things like, Oh shit, it's just Victor. But since we were sitting on mattresses close to the ground, it wasn't easy to see clearly who was at the window. And since the person just stood there looking straight at one of the girls, I got up to check. I saw a man who somehow looked a lot like my friend but a bit more fat and older than him. As I came to the conclusion that it was a stranger, I froze while looking at him and him looking back at me. When I said, it's not Victor, everyone else also froze and looked at me waiting for a reaction, but all I could think was to ask what he wanted. He just stood there for a second and asked, there's a bar nearby, and we need a drummer to play with our band. Are any of your friends a drummer by any chance? Which weirdly enough I am, but I just told him no, and after some extra long seconds looking at us, he left. My friend came back, and we made fun of the situation, making jokes on how it was him messing with us and whatnot. Later, most of the group decided to sleep in one bedroom, and leave the second for me and one of the girls since they saw us kissing earlier. We all go to bed, but some hours later, I wake up to the girl shaking me in horror and whispering that she heard something coming from the kitchen. So I get up, tell her to lock the bedroom when I leave, and go check the sound like the moron who always dies first in films. As I pass by the second bedroom, I think about calling someone else to join me, but as soon as I see them all sleeping, I hear something at the kitchen's window. I quickly move there in silence, check around, and as soon as I find and grab a knife, the door opens right in front of me. It was the same guy. I knew it was no joke since I just saw my friend sleeping. It probably took like five to ten seconds of us staring at each other, but it felt like an eternity. While still holding the door handle, he made a slow movement with the other hand towards something under his shirt, which was probably a firearm or a knife, but I also lifted my hand, showing him the knife, so he stopped. The kitchen was quite small, so we were standing pretty close to each other, and at this point, we both knew it would end bad for both of us if he tried something, so I shook my head and said as calm as I could, don't. He continued to stare at me for a little bit longer, and then finally closed the door and went away. I went back, told the girl it was nothing, and that we should go back to bed. I didn't sleep that night. We left early in the morning, and I made sure to ask my uncle and cousins if they ever received weird visits there. They said that the only person who ever goes there at night is the old neighbor when his wife doesn't let him arrive drunk at home.
so he grabs my uncle's rocking chair to sleep until he gets sober. Now, every year, my friends talk about spending another weekend there, but I always make an excuse so we never go through that again. And they don't know what happened that night. This happened seven and a half years ago, June 23rd, 2016, while I was cleaning out my house. I was renting a house for a year, and the year was almost up. I wasn't going to be living there the next year, so it was time for me to start clearing out and moving my stuff to the next place. The house that I had at the time was fairly small, but it was plenty of space for just me. I lived there by myself and I had just finished cleaning out the living room, other than some basic furniture, and I'd moved on to clean the kitchen. There were quite a few cabinets, so many that I didn't use a good number of them. I was looking through some of the ones that I didn't use to make sure that there was nothing I had in them. One of them I opened up, and I saw something in the back corner. It looked like some type of shirt or rag. I grabbed it and saw that I didn't think it was mine. But when I moved it, it revealed a small white lever that I could barely see. The cabinet was in the corner, sort of by the sink and halfway blocked by the stove. I thought it was just another pipe, but it just looked a bit different to me. In order to get in, I had to crawl inside the cabinet, which was pretty large. Once I got inside, I saw there was a small trap door to the side, leading into the wall. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. You had to be completely inside in order to see the detail of it, and I decided to open the door, which led to an extremely narrow hallway with a sort of crawl space. But when I got farther inside, I was horrified. I saw that there was food, as well as several blankets, as if someone had been living inside of there. The good news, at least to me, is that whoever was in there was gone. I tried to make sense of it and figure out how long the person had been there and how I didn't know about it. I was gone from the house a lot with work and other stuff, but I didn't know how it was possible for someone to live in there without me knowing. I continued cleaning until it got pretty late, and the next day after work, I continued. I was still kind of in shock with finding a secret room in my house and decided to look at it once again. I opened the cabinet and went inside. Then I pulled the lever open, just like I had the previous day. But this time, as soon as I opened it, I saw movement, and then saw a person for a split second. They slammed the door back shut on me, and I immediately turned and ran all the way out of my house to my car, and then called the police. I was so scared that I started driving away as well. I opened up my phone, told the police the whole situation, and they came to my house a short time later to find that whoever had been there was now gone. I was absolutely disgusted knowing that this random person had access to my house for who knows how long. It felt like a vivid nightmare I needed to wake up from. I still remember this date, seven years later. It stayed with me like a scar. A scar I don't know if I will ever heal from. Luckily for me, I moved out the next week. I really don't know how long the person was living in my secret room, but thankfully, it never gave me a problem. This story happened to me back when I still lived at my parents' house. I was commuting to college at the time and had three siblings that also lived at home. My brother and two sisters. For some context, we lived on five acres in rural Ohio, surrounded on both sides by woods and farm fields. Additionally, during the week, my dad normally left for work at 2 a.m., so I always felt like it was my job to be the man of the house. 
because he was gone during the times when you would imagine something sketchy happening. However, on this night, because it was a weekend, my dad was home. I woke up to the sound of my brother's voice trying to get my attention. We had separate rooms upstairs, and coming out from our rooms, you could look down over the banister and see our front door. When I woke up, it took a few moments to get out of the haze and realize what was going on. I looked at the clock, and it was around 2.30 a.m., and my brother told me there were two men at our front door. Of course, now this is a real wake-up call. We quietly walk out of my room and peek over to look down at the front door. When we look down, there was no one at the door, but I noticed my parents off to the side, out of view of the glass on the front door. I whispered down to my dad, and he told me there were two guys who'd been talking to each other and knocking on the door. Hearing my dad say this freaked me out even more. I went back into my room and grabbed my pistol, quickly shuffling down the stairs after looking to make sure they weren't at the door. If they had been, they would have easily seen me coming down the stairs, as it is in direct view of the door. My brother is right behind me as we head over to where my parents are, whispering to try and find out what is going on. My parents had woken up to our dog barking and come out to see these two men knocking loudly at the door. At this point, we see the men return and they begin knocking again, despite the fact that no one had come to the door and our dog is still actively barking. The fact that they were there at this time, in a location where houses are spread out hundreds of yards and still knocking while the dog was barking, made the situation even more terrifying. After a couple of minutes, the men walk away, and we all shuffle across the kitchen into the family room to peek out of the windows into our driveway, which is lit up by our outside light. There was a black Cadillac sitting there, but no one was inside from what we could see. Immediately the question was, where did those guys go? They weren't in their car, and they were no longer at the front door. Unfortunately, we figured out the answer when the handles on our back French doors started jiggling. They were actively trying to enter the back of our house, which enters the kitchen. At this point, I just remember my mom frantically saying, David, as pure terror overwhelmed her. At this point, two things happened. Adrenaline filled my body as I prepared my handgun, horrified at the very real possibility that I might have to shoot these men. Secondly, my dad finally grabbed the phone, called the police, and calmly told them what was happening. Thankfully, after a minute of jiggling, they stopped at the back door and disappeared again, only to return knocking at the front door. However, at this point, several minutes had gone by, and suddenly we saw the local police fly up in multiple cruisers with their lights on. As they whipped into our driveway and front yard, the two men bolted away, attempting to run the long way around the house across the driveway. One of them disappeared out of our view, but the other one was intercepted by an officer yelling for him to get on the ground. He didn't, and he was immediately tased and then proceeded to fall on the ground. Some of the officers went around the house after the other guy, and one of them came to talk to my dad and I as we came out the front. They ended up finding the other man hiding in my sister's little playhouse in the backyard. It appears both of them were drunk and or high, as one of them had cocaine on him. While they were both arrested that night, we never did find out what they were charged with or what happened to them. Needless to say, the whole experience wasn't fun. So random men at our door in the middle of the night. Let's not meet again. I'm a 17-year-old female working as a cashier at a popular thrift store. 
I'd been there for approximately eight months, and I love my job and my co-workers. The common thing I've noticed is that unfortunately, any time a new younger female cashier starts working, she will be hit on by plenty of older guys, and I was no exception to that. I've never had to deal with creepy or weird customers until this job, and I worked in the food industry before, so maybe that's why. We of course get a handful of regulars, and while I've had a few creepy older guys hit on me before, there's a regular that comes in all the time. I want to say he's in his late 40s, and while he's always nice, my manager pointed out his obsession with me. I was called in the office the other day so he could show me how he acts and such with surveillance cameras. Here's a list of what's been pointed out to me that I didn't really notice before. He comes in at roughly the same time I'm working every day and apparently doesn't show up on my days off. I work closing most of the time, so he comes in around 6pm. When he comes in, he will immediately look at the register I almost always work at and will do a double take looking for me. He usually buys one bullshit item, spending about 15 minutes in the store usually. My manager has pointed out that he needs to buy something or else he knows it'll look weird. Every time, without fail, he will go to my register, and even when I was on the floor doing recovery, he'll ask me to check him out because I'm his favorite cashier. If there's a shorter line, it doesn't matter. He will stay at my register waiting and watching me. He lingers around after buying something just to talk to me, showing me things on his phone, making sure there's no one else in line. My manager said he approaches me when I'm alone so he can talk to me without holding up a line. He's commented on my hickeys that I failed to cover up before on my neck, making weird remarks here and there. He says he usually checks because there's always about one or two. He said I would look good as a blonde, which isn't inherently weird, but paired with everything else, I guess it is. When I wasn't wearing any makeup, he would say something like, you seem out of sorts recently. I started wearing makeup again recently, and he's commented saying he likes that I'm back to my old self. I've noticed weird flirty remarks with him, but I always brush it off, because customers are always kind of weird, and I deal with that often anyway. He'll lean over the register counter to talk to me closer, just his body language in general. He does a double take when he leaves too, keeping his eyes on me. I think it's possible he knows what car I drive. He was at my work this morning, even though I always do closes. I've asked my boyfriend, who works with me, if it's true that he never shows up when I'm off. He said yes, it's true. I don't think he knows my schedule, but he might know my car and see it in the parking lot. He always parks out of the store outdoor camera view, so I still don't know what car he drives. The general manager was made aware by the manager, but the creep didn't interact with me much today because I was never alone at the register or on the floor. I was training a new cashier today. He was there a lot longer than usual, I'm assuming because he was waiting for a time when I was alone and there were no customers. I think he gave up when he realized I would be training for the majority of my shift and seeing how busy it was. Since I worked opening yesterday, he came in before my shift at work, probably assuming I would be opening again. I'm working closing tonight. Apparently, he came in earlier and saw the new cashier, so we actually ended up asking one of them. New cashier? Who quit? Probably thinking I quit. It's only 4.33. He usually comes in around 6 if I'm closing. I'm just waiting to see if he shows up for the second time today. I doubt he will since he might think I don't work today. My manager and I are going to keep a log of what time he comes in and leaves. I'm going to keep his phone number saved in my notes so I can look him up and hopefully find his name and other information. I will possibly keep my phone on the counter to voice record what he says. I wish I could record him in person, but it would be too obvious. If I get shown more security footage, I will video that and stare.
Last night, my boyfriend and I got in bed. Lights off, TV on, in bed naked as usual. A couple of minutes go by of us talking, and our cat jumps on the nightstand and is staring outside. He does this all the time, so I assume it's a stray cat out there. He runs across the bed to my nightstand, so I peek outside. My cat's tail is all fluffy, so I think it's just the cat that he doesn't like. I look out the window and see a phone screen. I have no clue what was on it. I didn't think to actually look that hard. It was a red thing in the middle, but that's all I know. I look at my boyfriend, assuming I'm just seeing the reflection of his phone, when I see my boyfriend is not holding his phone. I back myself into the corner of the wall, so whatever's in the window can't see me. I just repeatedly say, there's someone outside, until my boyfriend finally gets up. I grab a sweater and pants from the floor and we're just walking around the house as he calls 911. We come back to the room and the guy is still out there, but my cat will not let me get near the window without growling, so I don't get to see his face. The cops get there a few minutes later and search the block. They come from the front yard and the backyard, climb some fences, and they don't find anyone. They just say they'll be on the lookout and to stay aware pretty much. My boyfriend and I are both reasonably shaken up. I point out the cat was acting similarly last night. Not exactly, but she was fluffed up and on edge. He pointed out that with how often I sleep naked or close to, it's possible the guy has done that multiple times to see. He also points out that with the lights on, you could definitely see into the bedroom from that window so he would have been able to see us having sex if he caught us on the right night. There's no proof he's been there more than once, and with our neighborhood, he was probably just some guy on drugs wandering around. He left the gate open, stood there even though we clearly spotted him, and just didn't seem too smooth in his operation. I don't know, I just hope it was a one-time thing. I feel so helpless. I didn't go outside and do anything because I didn't know if he had a weapon, but I wish I could have. My boyfriend wants to buy a gun this weekend, and I hope that can at least give me some sense of security. I was relocating across Texas and, as I normally do, was driving through the night to skip traffic, and because it's more serene that way, I was driving straight through central Texas going northwest. So seeing the hill country change to desert by the light of the full moon was really cool. Anyways, I was driving with my now ex-wife. It was around 2am and we were running low on gas. Luckily, we were pulling into a tiny no-name town, and we could see an old gas station come around the bend. Now, this town only has one road, and this station was right at the edge of town, at the very end of the road. When I describe the gas station as old, I mean very old. The type that has no prepaying option, you simply flip up the handle on the machine, and you hear the pump inside start struggling to get the gas from the reservoir. It had the old style tick readers too, not a thing electrical on it. I, being a young man, had never seen one before, so I walked into the store to buy the gas before I pumped. There was only one light on in the store, at the far back, and I almost thought it was closed since it was barely brighter inside than it was outside in the moonlight. Upon entering, I saw the place was deserted. No customers, no workers, nothing. However, there was an odd tune playing on someone's radio that I couldn't place. An old sounding upbeat piano piece was playing somewhere around the corner, inside, and I heard shuffling once I walked closer to the source. This place made me feel scared, not just a, whoa, this is creepy, scared, but a, all hairs are on end. Something is seriously wrong here, but I can't figure it out scared. As I turned the corner, 
I saw a young man standing next to a large radio and dancing. His dancing, though, was extremely off-putting and seriously didn't match the tune at all. Though the radio was cranking out what sounded like ragtime, this guy was running his hands up and down his body and pretty much feeling himself with his eyes closed in what looked like bliss. He was going far slower than the music and definitely wasn't on tempo. For some reason, I couldn't speak. I couldn't even move. I was in a trance as every part of me screamed to turn and leave. Eventually though, I said, excuse me, I just need to get some gas. The guy kept dancing. I said it a bit louder and he finally slowed down a bit and opened his eyes and focused them on me. But it was like he was looking at a finely cooked steak. He was looking almost through me and silently walked to the register without saying anything. I said, uh, just twenty dollars please. He, again, didn't say anything and just stood behind the ancient register, so I just figured maybe he didn't speak the language or was embarrassed I caught him dancing, so I laid the money on the counter and went outside hoping he'd turn on the pump. I filled up told my wife about the weird ass scene in there and, when I was done, turned off the pump to kill the horrible grinding noise from the interior pump fighting against gravity to get the gas up. The weird thing is, when we were leaving, I looked back in the window and the guy was still standing there behind the counter. Not all that unusual in itself, but I could see my money was still on the counter in front of him. It was like a robot who just turned off once I left. This is where it gets really weird. A couple of months later, I was driving back to San Antonio to visit family, and we figured we'd stop at that old gas station to see it in the daytime, since it had become somewhat of a running joke between us. We pulled into this tiny town, and the thing was gone. The lot it sat on at the end of the road wasn't even there. It was just grass, no rubble, no old pump, no lighting, nothing. It was like somebody picked it up and moved it. It looked like nothing had been there for years. I still get freaked out thinking about it. This happened to me a few years ago while traveling. I was private tutoring and my boss sent me to his office to pick up my paycheck at the end of the first month. He gave me the address, so me and my boyfriend at the time drove there and he waited outside for me. It was a tall building and I approached what looked like a security guard. I showed him the address I had written down to make sure it was the right place. He studied it, nodded, and told me it was on the fifth floor, and he showed me the direction to the elevator. As I got in the elevator, he stepped in with me. He pressed number five. I assumed it was his job to escort people to the right floors. He was staring me up and down the entire time. I glanced down at the address my boss had written down and realized it said, second floor, not fifth. I turned to the security guard and I started to say, I think we're a little confused as this says second. He made out he didn't understand my language, so I started to repeat the number two in Vietnamese instead. He completely ignored me and instead turned and gave me this creepy smile. It still sent shivers down my spine when I think about it. He reached out and started to stroke my hair saying, so beautiful. I froze to the spot and started to shout, no, Adam, over and over. By this point, the doors to the elevator had opened. I stepped out and looked around, and there was absolutely nothing there. It was under construction. There was paint and dirty old sheets everywhere, all over the floor. I ran towards the window and looked outside, to see if I could get my boyfriend's attention, but I was too high up. 
The creepy guy had gotten out too and was pointing me down an empty corridor. He looked really frustrated now. He was blocking the elevator by this point, so I couldn't get back in. I pretended to walk towards the corridor and he followed me. When I got to the door, I bolted back to the elevator and started to press the button to the ground floor, and he followed me. Whenever the doors closed, he would just press the button from the other side and they'd open again. He was shouting at me in Vietnamese and looked angry with me. Adrenaline had kicked in and I was literally thinking about anything I could use or how I could defend myself if he tried anything with me. I started screaming as loud as I possibly could to make him back off. As I pressed the ground floor button and the doors began to close again, he smiled at me once more. This awful, creepy smile that I think about all the time. My heart was in my mouth as I imagined what would be waiting for me when the doors inevitably opened again. To my surprise, the elevator started moving towards the ground floor this time and I managed to get out. I ran out as fast as possible and was crying by the time I got to my boyfriend. He wanted to go back inside, but I stopped him and made him drive me home. Fast. The same day, I called my boss and explained what had happened. It turns out that I wasn't even in the right building, never mind the right floor. I blame myself for getting the wrong address, but a different country in that. I don't know why the guy in there pretended I was in the right location, or what his intentions were with me, or even why he decided to just let me go. Maybe he was trying to scare me, or maybe he was trying his luck with me. I have no idea, but I think about it from time to time, or tell the story again to someone. And it really creeps me out to think of what could have been. I've never gotten in an elevator with a man again, either. I hope you enjoyed that guys. If you have a scary story you would like me to read in an upcoming video, this is one way to help me guarantee variety in the stories I share. You can email me or post it to my subreddit. I'll drop the details in the video description. Thank you all for listening and a special thanks to my patrons and channel members who now have early access to ad-free videos as well as other behind the scenes content. Thank you to Rebecca James, Mason Hayes, Chelsea Moffat, Lisa Prentice, Michelle and Kevin, Amanda M, Rebecca Morris, Jennifer, Jessica Lasley, Brock Bollard, Kim Thompson, Angela Reeves, Sherry Agbehi, Nathan Shadwick, Nicholas Johnson, Samantha Place, Cheryl Duckworth, Scoutmonk405, Z Harris, Unladylike13, Ventura CA, Elizabeth Mayers, Alexia Tuttle, Marshana Rainey, Yolo Sapien, Mary Wright, Jessica Copperfield, Zoe D, Danielle Scholl, Jane Wiggins, Tara Harris, Mary Wright, Kelly Townsend, M, Deshaun Edmondson, Kimmy Love, Wendy Maris, Confessions of a Cleaner, Megan Abrams, Miss Tycoon, Stephen Sloan, Christina Myway, Ashley Bray, Matt is a Felter, Danielle, Tina Marie Heckman, Amal Garner, Lisa Radford, Deborah Malays, Connie Sue, Taya Adwell, Diana Johnston, Vampy Debs, Jasmine Davis, Erica Asir, Fox Mulder, Ram Beltran, Tina, Nick Bigdowski, Sarah C.H., Neil Kavanagh, Tierra Sanders, Timothy Stratton, Jennifer Jenkins, Lloyd Rash, Maribel De Luna, Michael O'Malley, Marissa, Kuro, Amber Hobbs, King Slim, 
Justin Beast Gillespie, Joy Dana, Jay Bardle, Anissa, Stephanie McLaren, Lumini Kami, Skin Crawler, Adiara, Bella Place 2006, Michelle Welchman, Dana B, Lisa McDonald, Clarice Scott, Madison C, Wasp Sting, Jennifer J, Ashley, Lily Pan, Lee, Taya, Wyatt, Gina, Laura, JK06, Fenrizio, Donna, Joey, Big GSC, Tanya, Spaghetti Yolo King, Matthew, October Gypsy, Lisa, Ali, Thomas, Build With Me, Leticia, Fran, Debs, Insomnicats, Stephanie, Summer, Rebecca, Tyra, This Bad Kitty, Your Pappy's Dilly, Lainey, Tripping Balls Through History, Samantha, Erica, Alyssa, Tracy, Killian's Place, April, James Ardiver, Jen, Joy, Handout, Pegasus Genesis, Karen Keating, V. Berry, LJ, Fiona X Fox, Scott, I Like Booty, Monica Level Ace, Chris and Donna, Holly Spry, Kimber, Jasmine, Sanitix, Heather Haven, Kitty Cat Luna 2, ADHD Aurora, Janice, Cinderella Baby, Borderline Betty, Lady Draco, Erica Nicole, Snowball Rathena, Melanie, The Honeybee 987, Pretty Girl 215, Ryan, Brooke, Wendy, Crafty Kel, Tina, Dina, Vampy Debs, Patricia, Amber, Krista, Brenda, Absent Alice, Christy, Kay, Spider's Web, Ooh La La Andrea, Sue, Monique, Sean Gorman, Emma Lisa, Sigma Cube X, Greg, Chelsea, Amanda Jane, Sam, Zeb Tepe, Sarah C, Austin, Tegan, Lil Smart, Jenny, Gabrielle, Fire 05, Sarah P, James Gargano, Gemma Allen, Monica Level Ace, and Alex. I hope you're doing well guys. I'll see you all on the next one.